Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Now today we're back down Mill Farm, one of Barford's waters. We are here a couple of weeks ago where we had a session planned with one of Norfolk's best carp anglers and a close mate of mine, Rob Shanks. Unfortunately he couldn't make the last session so I fished it here on my own. To some great success, we had five or six fish. Nothing of any particular size but great days fishing. Now we have managed to get Rob down in the bank today so as promised we're going to do a bit of filming with him and get a real insight into what Rob's doing and how he catches in these cold conditions. We're in the middle of December now, it's going to be tough, but let's go see how he's getting on. Well, it looks like we tied that one spot on, mate. You got one? Steve, how are you? Yeah, I've got a nice little problem in the net. Great timing, because um, one of the important things I was going to go through today is fish care. And while we've got one in the net, no better opportunity. Sweet, mate. Let's give so, us a hand with that. Then. I was going to say, one of the important things, if you've got someone to help you, it's always best to get someone involved rather than do it yourself. Right, while you've got a fish in the net, you can do a lot of damage. It's, it's, you know, I see people lifting the nets out and all that. This is the important time to look after all those fins. So I'll never lift the net out of the water in one piece. I'll always break it down. One thing I like to do is just make sure the fish is nicely centred. So, you, you know, you don't get it tipping everywhere. And I'll roll the mesh up. Obviously, it's important to make sure you've got enough water you know, so the fish is safely in the margin. Looks like a nice yeah, fish, mate. It is. A nice little common rate. Fins. It's vitally important that all these fins, both sides, are checked that they're against the body. One of the biggest things that people do, they lift them out, the fins are protruding, and they break them. So, you know, I'm just checking that everything's flush to the body before I move the fish. Make sure everything's nice and safe. Oh, and we handle him out. Thank you. Well, well, mate, it's a cracking start. Yeah, I'm well happy with that. Um, with the conditions we got today, I didn't expect to catch it quickly, so I'm chuffed to get get a bite so early. Um, so here we are, ready to unhook the fish. I, as you can see, I've got everything close to hand: my water, my scales, my Medicare. The sling is zeroed um, and the mat is wet, which you've always got to do. You've got to be prepared. Everything's all nice you've and got set. Got to be prepared. You if, it. if you're not prepared, you flap about. I've seen it happen. Um, got to remember these fish live in cold water, so they want to be yeah. wet. In the summer, you see people putting fish on the dry, hot unhooking mats, and you know it's, it's, it's no good for them. So look at him. Let's slip that hook out, mate, and we'll have a look yeah, at him then. That's it. We'll get that hook out. I think we've been lucky and it's come out. I think in the you net. actually got one here, mate. <laughs> you could have got much luck in that. <laughs> no, it's I'll out get in this the out of the way for you. Again, yeah, that's it. You move you want to get all your gear that's not involved away from you. That's why it's so helpful to have someone on board to help you out. So again, taking care of the fins. Now I'm gonna lift them. And if you would be so kind to just get the net out from underneath. Cracking fish, mate. He's definitely in the doubles. And there you go, look at him. So again. Keep the water on him, into the gills, make sure he's nice and happy. I'll get him in the sling. Can we have a quick way? Yeah, we'll have a quick way. I'll I do know, the honours for I know you, you I know you're keen to get a double on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what we can have. We fished a couple of weeks ago and we had much smaller fish, yeah. so it's nice to see yeah, a few I bigger fish I watched on the, the bank. video, obviously I was at home ill at the time. Um, but, um, like I say, my tactics aren't too different today. I've just scaled things up a bit because we want to... Perhaps get something a bit bigger. Let's have a little look then. If you want to. Well, I'll give you about 12 8, mate. That'll be lovely. Great start. Good start. Let's have a quick look at them. Let's have a quick look. I know you shouldn't keep them out too long. Now, getting back, like I say, fish, the fish care's got to come first. You know, I know these are only little fish, but, you know, if we don't look after these ones, they don't grow into big fish. No, that's spot on. That's exactly right, mate. I just want to treat his mouth, just to make sure, you know, and, you, They've got to heal nicely. That's just a normal antiseptic. It's from, a normal yeah. antiseptic green. There's a really nice, tiny little mark there. So he's, you know, hardly any damage to this fish being on the bank today. A little bit of water, keep them wet. He's giving so you a hard time now. He is, but the, the, the key thing is not to rush them. But you see people, they get, they get angry with them, they get agitated. Here you go, look at that. Well, well done, mate. Cracking little start. Let's just get him back. I know that's just equally as important as well, so let's just go through yeah. that. Taking care of the fins again, 
always take them in a sling, never carry them back by hand, or you can take them in a the net, but I prefer to use a sling, it's less mess in the boat. We're making sure the fins are tight to the body again. Back to the water then. Let's get him back then. Oh, let's get him back to his home. There he is. I just like to let them swim off at their own pace. There you go, look, he's ready. Yeah, look, they'll tell you when they're ready to go. Let's see if we can catch another one. Well, that good start, mate. Thank this you. inspired me to get my rods out, so I'm going to go get set up. I think it's about time you put the kettle on, and we'll come back and have a little look at how you caught that one. Couldn't agree more. Let's get going. Well, that's the second rod set. Both rods fishing. I've got the left hand rod into a nice cutting on the far margin. We had some fish there a couple of weeks ago. And this right hand rod's just in a, a reed stack fairly close in. I've seen a few fish knocking in there, so there's a bit of interest. So that's where that bait's sitting. Now, if you want to see exactly how I'm fishing with my baits and rigs, if you check out our channel and the video we've done a couple of weeks ago in the winter carp fishing, you can see exactly how I'm fishing. I'm doing the same again today. But more importantly, what we're here for is to try and get a real insight into what Rob's doing, his rigs, his methods, and his thought process of how to get the best out of the swims when it's really cold and a tough time of year to catch. So I think it's time to go see if he's got that kettle brewing and let's pick his brains a bit. There you go, Steve. Oh, cheers, mate. And it's cold morning like this, you can't beat a good tea to start it with. Lovely, warm my hands up on. No, it's been good. So, how long have you been down here? Um, I got down here at 6 a.m. this morning, so I've been here a good couple of hours. It's probably now. dark, would you think? Yeah, it's pitch black. <laughs> um, I, was, I originally started down the other end of the lake. Um, I had a walk around, there's a lovely big reed bed down there, and the reed beds this time of year are great for holding carp, gives them a lot of shelter. Yeah. Um, so I started off down there and after about an hour and a half I quickly knew that um, there weren't many fish around so um, I decided to have a look about. Um, the wind had started to push down here, um, I was worried originally that it was going to be cold um, but it's quite warm so um, I followed it and got a result pretty quickly. Yeah so I mean you've obviously moved, there's a great bit of fish knowledge is just to move. I do it a lot in my match fishing, you see Rob again straight down here carp fishing, didn't have the right feeling. He's moved. And how long are you fishing for that fish? About 10 minutes. So the move was spot on then. Yeah. You've, you've seen fish come down here, or you thought fish have come down here, moved on and had one straight away. Yeah. Well, that's good. So you've got two rods fishing. Yeah. So are you gone for bait or are you singles like I am? Well, I am fishing two different approaches today just to try and, you know, edge my bets a bit. Yeah. Um, but the, the rig I caught on is this one here. Um, little pop up rig. So let's have a little look at that then, because it's a bit different from the normal hair rigs that we've shown before. Yep. So you notice you haven't actually got your, your knotless knot as such, so no. just talk us a bit of mechanics of how is it fishing, how it works. Yeah, um, it's obviously basically a pop-up rig. Um, I've got a little yellow pop-up on there. Um, it's constructed from a bit of coated braid, I've got a loop at each end. And rather than the hook being tied on, as you said, it's actually looped on um, there, and you just pass the loop through the eye and back over the bend. Um, one advantage this has for me is I'm very picky about hook points and this allows me to change my hook um, every time I catch a fish if I need so to. So it's literally just a case of sliding that back over there and you just put a new hook straight on. Yep, easy as that. That's great. Perhaps we'll have a little little bit more detail on that later. The first thing I have noticed as well, yellow baits. I caught on yellow last yep. week, so it's made a difference. Definitely. Um, obviously, I watched your video. Um, you, you can't beat a bit of inside knowledge. Um, fish are very... They have habits, um, so straight away I, I wanted to start off with something yellow because you've done well on it. Um, I have changed, obviously the other rig's slightly different, but you know, with, with big fish and chasing big fish, they, they do have habits that they stick to at times yeah, of course, a year. Yeah, of course, obviously different colours and yeah. Um, areas they get caught from regularly and things like that. So you, you can't beat a little bit of inside knowledge. You, you know, you've got to take all the information that, that's out there to try and get a bite. That's great. So that's the one you've had your fish on. Yep. What have you put? Is that just fishing as a single or are you putting bait around that? I'm spreading boilies around this. That is the one thing I did change from what you were doing. Obviously, last last time you were here, you caught 
you caught some carp, but you wanted yeah, this side to try. Awesome. And, try and catch a bigger fish. Yeah. yeah. So I've gone with a boily approach. I've spread sort of 12 to 15 baits with a throwing stick, um, mainly because you know big carp like boilies, and that's that's I thought we'd get a better one fishing like that. So what's your boilie choice today? Then come on, share your secrets. Let's well, have a look. This is um, bait I've been on all year. It's um, it's a sticky bait Sportex. It's a lovely, lovely sort of all season bait. Oh, very nice smell actually. Smells of maple. Yeah, so use this all year or just winter time or? All year. All year. Without fail. So I mean that's interesting there, just a couple of points, having a quick chat with Rob. Me different from last week fishing singles, catching plenty of fish but nothing of particular size. Rob's come here, obviously much more predominantly carp angling, he's attacked it straight away with some boilies. And well, we've had a bigger fish straight away. So there's something to take between the two, get insights of match fishing and carp fishing mixed together and it has pulled out a bigger fish, so that's a good start. What about your other rig, have we got the same rig or? No, it's a completely different rig. It's a kind of balanced bottom setup. Um, what I've got there is it's actually fluorocarbon, um, attached to a size 10 sort of long shank style hook. And I actually, rather than fish it with a hair, I fished it with a little D rig, um, bottom bait boilie, and a little bit of corn there for visual effects. So let's just have a little look at that, mate. So you're actually running that in between Rather than on here, you've actually tied your baits on onto a swivel. Yeah, that's um, come from a lot of observation in my fishing this year. Having um, the particular lake I fish, you get great opportunities to watch them in the edge. Um, test, tested a lot of different rigs, and that one, that was a rig that really So you really think that makes it. it harder? Obviously, that blowing that back, that makes it a lot harder. It, it, it's just all about, again, it's kind of more about the hook position when the fish picks it up. Um, with the sort of hairs and things, I found that you know every time you pick the hook up, it's not always in the right place. But with this one, as soon as you pick that bait up, that hook is in prime position to catch hold in the bottom lip. And it's very similar to my pop-up rig. That's again the thinking behind that. Um, and obviously with that bait travelling on the D, it makes it very hard for them to spit out. Um, you get very little time between a fish sort of picking a rig up and realising there's a hook attached, and, and it tries to reject it. With this rig on there it just gives you a few more seconds a nice bill yeah uh, it really is a so it's interesting factor. seeing between the two because obviously carp anglers everyone knows carp anglers are so rig crazy they love rigs yeah. but you're actually keeping things quite simple but the business end is nice and clever yeah it, it's it's always the best way um obviously every everybody will tell you the key to carp angling as i proved this morning is location if you've just got effective but simple rigs you don't need loads in your armoury, just two or three that you're really confident in every time you go fishing. you just got to put them in the right place. Simple and do you as. think length, hook length makes a difference? Or? Um, it can do, but I think it's, it's more to do with the bottom you're fishing over. If you're fishing a sort of harder bottom, obviously the, the shorter rigs don't get dragged in. I'd only yeah, use a yeah. longer rig if I feel like my lead is pulling my hook link into the bottom. So you're completely gauging what you're using from what you feel is on the bottom. Exactly. You have feel a little lead about, see what's there, and then we're choosing the rigs from there. Yeah, so. Feeling that lead down is, is really important in my fishing, whether, whether I'm getting hard donked on gravel or soft drops into weed and silt. It'll dictate what I put over it. And if I can't fish effectively over a bottom, you know, because it's too soft or too weedy, then I'll fish something like the Chod rig. But for this sort of venue where there's no weed, it's mainly silt, it, the, you know, these two rigs are always the first ones I pull out of the bag. Well, that sounds great to me. It's a great little insight just to get five or six minutes of just talking to some of the top anglers around, and you can just take different things from every single aspect you're fishing. The one thing I'm not enjoying at the minute, you are one up on me, so I think it's about time I had a little recast, mix things about, I might actually nick one of these off you as well. Go on then. See if we can put a fish in the bank as well. Thank you. A bit more bait out. Yeah, I've just repositioned my left hand rod to be honest. Um, it's been a lot of fish in these rigs, but they seem to have gone quiet and they seem to have disappeared. Um, 
I just know it's the far bank. I know it was fairly overcast this morning. There's a lot of sunlight on that bank. Yeah, I was about now. to say. It's actually turned in quite a nice morning, isn't it? The temperature's yeah. going to pick up. Do you think that's going to move them? Yeah, I'll over? Think, I think it will. I mean, that's why I've gone over there. There's, there's, there's no real holding areas there. Um, they seem to move from the reeds. So for me, they're moving about now. Um, and there's a lot of sun on that bank, so there'll be a lot of warmth. Um, and in the winter, they will take their opportunity to get a little bit of sun on their yeah, back. I suppose it's the first, obviously, it's the first bit that warms up, isn't it? The top half is going to get the sun over. They have moved mine as well, I've moved left and right. So, probably have moved three different spots. So, hopefully, yeah. you never know. We sit back and just keep working at it. How many baits you put out? Few? Oh, yeah, 15 to 24. It's nothing major, just enough to get a bite. I just want to put a spread there. So, if they do move through the area, they'll pick the odd bait up visually or by sense. And then, obviously, I've got a little little bag over there which I've glugged up with some uh, krill liquid and uh, hopefully that'll draw them down. Um, so just trying to get them generally in yeah. the area and then they should see your bright hook baits. Yeah I, th I think on a lake like this I mean it's a small lake and there's a few fish in there um, you've got to work at your fishing on these yeah, winter days. I, th I think if you sit it out you're missing opportunities you've got to you've got to read the weather you've got to have a look um, and try and reap the benefits. Well it all looks good although it is quiet at the minute perhaps it's a good time to have a bit of breakfast. How's the bacon roll, son? Thought you'd never ask. Let's get him on then. Right, while well, I just cook these up, obviously, I've been fishing with Rob quite a few times and obviously know the catches that he's managed to achieve in Norfolk but while it is quiet but it's just a nice time just to have a little bit of a chat with you and just talk us through like what's the experience of catching some of the biggest I mean obviously the main one that springs out to media court was Babyface yep. and the charity uh, what was it 49 49 so not quite the 50 but no. I mean I personally I've only ever had the experience of a 30 pound in this in the UK and that enough was the, the adrenaline rush of yep. catching it what was it like just catching the almost 50 pound fish um, in? Unbelievable experience. I mean, it's a fish that I sort of purposely set out to catch as well. So, so as well as obviously the elation of, of catching a big fish, it's, it's the thrill of the chase. It's, it's, you know, it took me 11 months. Um, so you worked pretty hard for it. You'd, pretty hard fishing. You go there to target that fish I as went well. there purposely to catch that fish. Um, it's, like I said, it took me 11 months. Um, it, I caught it in the spring, I'd fished all the previous summer and I'd, I'd fished really well, I'd caught a lot of fish but um, she was eluding me. So that time. was one of the hardest ones? It was, it was, it was, a, it was a difficult time in my life as well because I'd just had my um, second child as well so my missus was uh, giving me it's a nice bit and busy, <laughs> yeah. not getting back in the boat. Yeah, he was, about, he was about three weeks old, when, uh, not even that, three days old when, three the, days. New, <laughs> when the new season started and uh, she wasn't too keen for me to get out on the bank but I uh, I made her a promise, believe it or not, and she let me have um, six days fishing, um, which is very rare because most of my sessions are sort of 12, 14 hours. And I promised her if she'd let me go for six days, um, that, I'd, that I'd catch it and give up for the year. <laughs> and so you, you had to catch it in your six days? I had to catch it on the six days, and on the uh, morning of the fourth, um, she went in the net. Well, it doesn't get much better than no. that. Obviously, I'll just pick one more out as well that I think obviously is probably one of your best catches. Not actually that long ago, and dissimilar to this, did you have forty pounds common? Yeah, forty, 40 pounds pound common, common. Um, from a water very, very close to here. Again, that was a, another fish I'd purposely gone out of my way to target. Um, very difficult lake. Um, plenty of fish, plenty of bites, but it's really busy. So and it was freezing cold, wasn't freezing it? Cold. Freezing cold. I had it this April, and uh, it, it was winter conditions. Um, it'd been a tough winter. There'd been a lot of people fishing, a lot of bait going in. So. Um, Sort of having an edge was really hard, um, but I had noticed that there was a group of anglers fishing, and we we're all catching fish, but they were all quite small. Um, so I sort of pieced it together in my head and um, decided to sort of fish completely away from where the fish were showing um, and bait areas where you know the main bulk of fish so weren't just thinking out of the box again. And... Thinking out of the box, um, I started baiting one area in February, and straight away I had a brace of 30. Um, and the lake was half frozen that night, so that was one hell of an achievement. I was yeah, I can imagine, yeah. One's enough, but to yeah. catch two is yeah. obviously some great catches. Well, we've picked a couple of catches out there. I mean, Rob's had many catches. We're not going to go through them all, but I think it does just show 
just don't give up any time of the year. I mean, like Rob says, it's taken 11 months and six solid nights planning to catch one particular fish. So if times aren't always good for you, not always right, get back on the bank again, and I'm sure putting the effort in, you'll get the rewards. Yeah, you've got to keep going. That's it, never give up. That's always the way. We're going to sit and enjoy these, and most importantly, we need to catch a fish. I oh, know. <laughs> fished hard throughout the day, but unfortunately as sometimes it happens in fishing, the carp simply didn't play ball, and Rob's early fish turned out to be the only one of the session. I guess it's why it's called fishing and not catching, but sometimes just being there is enough. Well mate, that was a tough day after all, very, really tough. Very tough, um, I mean we've seen very little to go on this afternoon. We got off to that good start, didn't we? With a quick early bite. Um, well, I think you sort of led us in a bit false sense of security. You come down and you had one in the net, and <laughs> since then we've seen absolutely nothing. Mm. It's just been dead. I mean, that fish that Rob had has literally been the only fish out on the lake today. So shows just how hard it was. Great bit of angling to get that fish. I mean, I think they're just probably sitting up somewhere, yeah. aren't they? You're not we, really moving. We searched the water, we sort of tried several different techniques, didn't we? And, you know, we, we just haven't been out to drop on them today at all. Yeah, it's just one of those things in winter fishing, you can't always go and have a big net of fish, and it's just nice to get on the bank fishing. So, I think it's nice to call it a day, yeah, Rob. It's been Thanks a lovely day. Thanks, Hopefully Steve. we'll see Rob on a few more of the videos later on in the series, and see if we can put a few more fish together. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you again on the next one.